Hello, everybody. I hope that you're all having an absolutely wonderful day or night, depending on where you are and what time you're watching this. If you are new here, my name is Chewy. Uh, I am a strategy gamer and I primarily focus on EU4. So as you can imagine, Victoria 3 is certainly up my alley when it comes to interest in Paradox titles, especially considering that uh, Victoria 3 is probably the most highly anticipated game that PDS has made in quite a long time. So you can expect plenty of reads of these dev diaries with me. What I want to do is I want to scroll through it, read through it, kind of explain what that means to me and then at the end i will give you my thoughts and opinions hopefully we can grow a little bit of interest for victoria on the channel so if you would like to see more make sure that you would please show your support by leaving a like on the video it does help us out a lot more than you know and don't forget to subscribe if you have not already and if you ding the bell you'll actually get notifications when we upload new videos so if you're wanting to keep up on the dev diaries without having to read them yourselves that's the best way to do it so dev diary one pops hello everyone i'm mikhail victoria 3's lead game designer and oh boy does it feel good to finally be able to say that out loud you i definitely agree with that sentiment today i have the pleasure to reveal some details about one feature everyone thinks about when they hear victoria 3 the pops of course pops were introduced in the very first victoria game and represent your country's population pop mechanics have since snuck into other paradox titles like stellaris and imperator but in-depth population simulation is what victoria is about and we're going to bring that system to a more depth than ever before in Victoria 3, Pops are a country's engine. They work the industries, they pay the taxes, they operate the government institutions, and they fight the wars. They are born, they die, they change occupation, they migrate, and they organize, get angry, and start revolutions. Every Pop is visualized so you can see which demographic sports the best mustache. Note that Pop portraits are very much a work in progress. So here you go. You can see a nice, thick, juicy mustache down there. And then secure for 20. I'm not sure exactly what that means. You, the player, might be in charge of the country, but you're not in charge of the pops and you can't manipulate them directly. Yet everything you do in the country affects them. And in turn, they will react in what they perceive to be in their own best interest. A large part of your game will consist of trying to sate the pops' appetites for good materials or political reform. But most actions you will take aren't to the benefit of every pop in your nation. And by making life better for one part of the population, you may inadvertently upset another demographic. I certainly can understand that in Victoria too. The most important aspect of pops are their professions, which reflects the type of job it carries out in the buildings where they work. A pops profession determines its social class and can affect its wages, political strength, what other professions it might qualify for, and particularly which political interest groups it's prone to supporting, which you will hear lots more about in future dev diaries. Ooh. Some of the pop professions you will encounter in Vicky 2 are aristocrats, capitalists, bureaucrats, officers, shopkeeps, machinists, laborers, and peasants, most of which were in Victoria 2. Capitalists were super important. Bureaucrats were essential for kind of keeping your admin efficiency up. Machinists, laborers, peasants are all obviously all very important parts of your economy as well. Investing in industries that provide job opportunities for the kinds of professions you want to encourage in your country is key to the society building game of Victoria 3. Every variation of profession, culture, religion, and workplace in this world will get its own unique pop at any given time. This results in many tens of thousands of pops in the world working, migrating, procreating, and agitating. Very interesting. So it looks like here we got a guy in a fez. He is a Turkish Sunni man who's got a literacy of 50. Uh, I'm assuming that means 50% of them are literate. Political strength and then net income. So you can see how much you're making from them, what interest group they're a part of, how much of that exact population exists, how much money they have, I assume. So it says wealthy landowners, old money from the old connections. As owners of farm and plantations, they contribute to more of the profits to the investment pool. Their political interests are represented as the landowners. So looks like this crew here is uh, considered the landowners subsist and they own the subsistence farm. So that makes sense. Only pops with adequate wealth can become aristocrats. Potential increases with greater wealth and a lesser degree literacy. So wealth and literacy allow you to upgrade. That makes sense. The people that make a pop are distinguished into workforce and dependents. Members of the workforce keep the buildings in the game operational and collect a wage from them in return. Those who cannot or aren't permitted to be officially employees are considered dependents. They collect only a small income from odd jobs and government programs. Laws affect who is included in each category. At game start, most countries do not accept women working and collecting a wage outside of the home, but by reforming laws governing the rights of women, more dependent pops will enter the workforce over time. By abolishing child labor, the amount of income dependents bring home will decrease, but will make it easier to educate your populace. Understandably. Increasing their overall literacy after a bloody war, many dependents of soldiers may be left without sufficient income. You may decide to institute pensions to help your population recover. In short, nothing in your country runs without pops, and everything of your country affects those pops, who in return provide new opportunities and challenges during your tumultuous journey through the Victorian era and beyond. I have oh so much more to say, but that's all for this week. You will hear much more from me in the future Dev Diaries. Next week, Martin will return to explain something quite central in the game, capacities. Okay. 
This screenshot here is uh, probably the most telling for me. It seems that you're going to be getting a lot of kind of interesting graphical representations of the people in Victoria too. Most of the graphical representations were tiny little graphics. And uh, to be honest with you, they were quite hard to distinguish apart from each other, at least in my experience they were. So this is nice. It seems like this is kind of the Victoria esque understanding of uh, what a UI will look like. Lots of information. And it's more going to be figuring out what you're looking for in these screens. So that's good though. I know a lot of people are quite concerned about the UI changes from Vicky 2 to Vicky 3. Vicky 2 has a very clunky UI, I would say, but it has a lot of information on those slides. And so it's hard to really pick out what exactly is important, what isn't at some times. I know Count Christo made a video about this, talking about the UI changes between say CK2, EU4, Vicky2, CK3, and then what the screenshots of Vicky 3 have showed us so far. And I think there's definitely a lot to that. I think that EU4 has some really great tooltips, really great banner flags to kind of tell you what is going on. And I hope that they incorporate that sort of flag style of uh, updates into Vicky 3. CK3, in my opinion, has a bit of a watered down version of how to update the player on what's going on around them. So I hope that they kind of go back to what EU4 provided, where even if it is maybe a little too much information, more is better than less, in my opinion, for that sort of thing. This button here looks like you might be able to bribe pops, which I think is pretty cool. I think that the dependent pops is a really interesting idea because I don't think that was really in Vicky 2, not that I can think of at least. The idea of having a war affect you in the long term, not just, you know, having your professional soldier pops, but you actually have pops that are conscripted, for example, and then they go back to the workforce, but some of them die obviously in war. So then women aren't allowed to work so that family is left without income. So that makes sense. And that's a really interesting dynamic to sort of consider how that's going to affect. Abolishing child labor, like it says, brings home less money, but allows you to increase your populace, right? So it's kind of like you can do the trade-off between post-industrialized society where people are, you know, children are handing out papers versus children are in school getting educated. So I think that's a really interesting thing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that sort of develops as well. I'm really interested to see how pop sort of interact between the pop groups. For example, minority populations, how those sort of militate. I'm really interested in seeing how they can sort of sway political opinion or sway political policy based on their militancy and all those sorts of things. But as they said, that is the dev diary for this week, Pops. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to have plenty more coming in on capacity. As I said in the beginning, if you guys are excited for more Vicky3 content, make sure you leave a like on this video so other people can find it. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already and ding the bell. And also leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're excited about for Victoria 3. Did you watch the announcement? A lot of people watched it with me on stream and I thought that was pretty cool as well. Also, if you want to support me, I do have a Patreon and merch store linked in the description below the video. That's all I got for you for now though. This is Chewy Shoot and I'll catch you guys later. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Big special thanks to my top mace supporters on Patreon. Drunk Binary, Bloodbound, Mr. McFlew, Devos Sander, Angelic, Bouncer Steve, Sprocket, Batman on Deck, M. Dressel, R. Lawrence, Tharup, The J. Baller, Blonde Damon, Jacko, R. Harvest, Corbett, Shankopotamus, T. Jarden, A. Vickman, Barking Glad, Natsuki, Harry, A. Murado, J. Cutchel, N. Winkler, R. J. Pilot, Stolier, and many more.